All right, folks, this is the video on the solutions to day one, day two, complex numbers worksheet. Starting with number one, we have two complex numbers that are equal to each other, so the real parts have to be equal, and the imaginary parts have to be equal. The real parts are a and negative nine, so a must be equal to negative nine. The imaginary parts are the b and the four, so b must be equal to four. For number two, the real part is a minus one, and the real part over here is five. So a minus one must be equal to five, which means a is gonna be six. The imaginary part is b plus three and eight. So b plus three must equal eight, therefore b is equal to five. Starting with number three, you're adding or subtracting. Adding the two real parts, five plus eight makes 13, and the two imaginary parts, two plus the six. That's gonna give you eight i. So you have 13 plus eight i. For number four, First, you'll distribute the negative into the second group, and now you have negative five minus two i. Combining the real parts, eight minus five gives you three, and six i minus two i gives you four i. For number five, adding the real parts, negative seven and negative four adds up to negative 11, and negative three i plus four i adds up to positive one i. For number six, distribute the negative inside first, and we get positive one plus i. Now I add the like terms. Negative two plus one is negative one, and negative three i minus or plus one i is negative two i. For number seven, distribute the negative first into the second group, and that changes those signs. Then you'll add the real parts, which is three tenths plus two fifths. We'll get a common denominator, and the two-fifths would turn into four-tenths. Four-tenths plus three-tenths is seven-tenths. Add the two imaginary parts, which is negative three-fourths i and negative one-sixth i. When we combine those, we have to have a common denominator, which will be 12. That negative three-fourths becomes nine-twelfths, negative nine-twelfths, and negative one-sixth becomes negative two-twelfths and negative nine minus two gives us negative 11 twelfths i. For number eight, you'll add the real parts together, which is five plus seven and then minus eight. That's gonna add up to four. Combining the imaginary parts, that's three i minus two i and then minus one i, that adds up to zero i. So your final answer is just four. For number nine, we have the square root of negative nine, which can be rewritten as the square root of nine, positive nine, times the square root of negative one. And we know that the square root of negative one is i, and the square root of nine is three, so it's three i. For number 10, the square root of negative eight can be written as the square root of four times the square root of two times the square root of negative one. The square root of four is two, Square root of negative one is i, and the final answer should be written as two times i times the square root of two. Remember, you want the i term always written before the radical. For number 11, the square root of negative 54 can be written as the square root of nine times the square root of six times the square root of negative one. The square root of nine is three, the square root of negative one is i, and your final answer is three i radical six. For number 12, we can rewrite the square root of negative 18 as the square root of nine times the square root of two times the square root of negative one. The square root of nine is three, and three times four is 12, and then you have the square root of negative one is i, so your final answer would be 12i radical two. For 13 through 16, um, you're multiplying these radicals, but because they have negatives in front or negatives inside, you have to take the i's out first. So the square root of negative four is just i times the square root of four. Square root of negative 16 is i times the square root of 16. 
The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 16 is 4. This i times the other i is i squared, which becomes negative 1, and 2 times 4 makes 8. So your final answer is negative 8. For number 14, you take the i's out first. So this becomes i squared of 2 and i squared of 3. i times i is i squared. 2 times 3 is 6. i squared is negative 1, and so your final answer is simply negative square root of 6. For number 15, take the i's out first. So we have i squared of 5 and i squared of 4. i times i is i squared. Square root of 4 is 2, so you have the radical 5 there by itself. i squared becomes negative 1, and negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, with the square root of 5 left over. Take the i's out here in number 16. That becomes i squared of 6 times i squared of 10. i times i is i squared. 6 times 10 is 6, 60. And so we have i squared becoming negative 1. The square root of 60 can be written as square root of 4 times square root of 15. Square root of 4 becomes 2. Negative 2 times, I'm sorry, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 with square root of 15 left over. For the next section, we are expressing each product in standard form. So 3i times 7i becomes 21i squared. And since i squared is negative 1, the final answer is just negative 21. For number 18, you'll distribute 4i times 3, which makes 12i. And 4i times negative 2i is negative 8i squared. The negative 8i squared becomes positive 8, because i squared is negative 1. And then you'll just rewrite that as 8 plus 12i, because standard form is a plus bi. So the real part would come first, and the imaginary part should be written last. So it's 8 plus 12i. For number 19, we'll distribute. Um, you might remember the FOIL method. So you'll multiply the 3 times 4, which is 12. Then 3 times 6i is 18i. 2i times 4 is 8i, and 2i times 6i is 12i squared. 12 comes down, 18i plus 8i combines to make 26i, and 12i squared becomes negative 12. 12 plus the negative 12 adds up to 0, so those cancel, and your final answer is just 26i. Number 20, distribute again, so 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times negative 9i is negative 36i, 5i times 2 is 10i, and 5i times negative 9i is negative 45i squared. The 8 comes down, negative 36i plus 10i combines to make negative 26i, and negative 45i squared becomes positive 45. 8 plus 45 is 53, so your final answer there is 53 minus 26i. For number 21, we distribute again, negative 2 times 4, negative 2 times 6i, negative 3i times 4, and negative 3i times positive 6i. The result is negative 8 minus 12i, minus 12i, and then minus 18i squared. That results in negative 8 minus 24i plus 18. Negative 8 plus 18 is 10, so your answer is 10 minus 24i. For number 22, distribute again. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. 6 times negative 2i is negative 12i. Negative 4i times negative 1 is positive 4i. And negative 4i times negative 2i is positive 8i squared. Combining the like terms here, negative 12 plus 4 makes negative 8i. And 8i squared becomes negative 8. 
negative 6 plus negative 8 is negative 14. And so your answer is negative 14 minus 8i. For 23, you're squaring 3 plus 4i. That means you're multiplying it times itself. So to multiply 3 plus 4i times itself, you're going to distribute. So you're multiplying 3 times 3, 3 times 4i, 4i times 3, and 4i times 4i. The result of all of that is 9 plus 12i plus another 12i plus 16i squared. 12i and 12i adds up to 24i. 16i squared becomes negative 16. And combine negative 16 and 9, and you get negative 7. So your answer is negative 7 plus 24i. For number 24, you are squaring negative 1 minus 2i. So that means you're multiplying it times itself. And we'll distribute again. Negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2i. Negative 2i times negative 1. And negative 2i times negative 2i. The result of all of that is 1 plus 2i plus another 2i plus 4i squared. 4i squared becomes negative 4. 2i plus 2i is 4i. Combine 1 and negative 4, you get negative 3. So your answer is negative 3 plus 4i. In this next section, it says find the product of the number and its conjugate. The conjugate of a complex number a plus bi is a minus bi. You just change the sign in the middle. So the conjugate of 4 plus 3i is going to be 4 minus 3i. And then we'll just multiply those two together. So 4 plus 3i times 4 minus 3i, you'll distribute 4 times 4, 4 times negative 3i, 3i times 4, and 3i times negative 3i. The result of that is 16 minus 12i plus 12i minus 9i squared. Negative 12i plus 12i is 0, so that cancels out. And negative 9i squared becomes positive 9. And 9 plus 16 makes 25. The conjugate of negative 6 minus i radical 5 is negative 6 plus i radical 5. And notice that I did put the i in front of the radical, which we should always do. All right, distributing negative 6 times negative 6. Negative 6 times i radical 5. Negative i radical 5 times negative 6. And negative i radical 5 times positive i radical 5. That result is 36 minus 6i squared of 5 plus 6i squared of 5 minus i squared times 5. And notice that 5 is without the radical. The two i terms cancel out. And negative i squared times 5 becomes positive 5. And add that to the 36 to get a final answer of 41. The conjugate of 22i is negative 22i. So 22i times negative 22i is negative 484i squared, which then becomes positive 484. First, we have to take the i out of this radical. So that would make it 3 minus i squared of 2. And its conjugate is 3 plus i squared of 2. Distributing, 3 times 3, 3 times i squared of 2, negative i squared of 2 times 3, negative i squared of 2 times positive i squared of 2. The result of all of that is 9 plus 3i squared of 2 minus 3i squared of 2 minus i squared times 2. Bring the 9 down. The middle terms here will cancel each other out. And negative i squared times 2 becomes positive 2. Added to the 9 makes 11. 
All right, express each quotient in standard form. So we start with the fraction 4i divided by 3 minus 2i. We cannot leave any i's in the denominator, so we have to multiply the denominator by its conjugate, which we will also multiply on the top. So the conjugate of 3 minus 2i is 3 plus 2i, and we're multiplying that on the bottom and on the top. Distributing on the top results in 12i plus 8i squared. And then distributing everything on the bottom, you know, you'll multiply 3 times 3, 3 times 2i, negative 2i times 3, and negative 2i times 2i. And the result is what you see here on this line. Okay, going back to the numerator, 8i squared becomes negative 8. And then the denominator, the 6i's cancel each other out and negative 4i squared becomes positive 4. In the numerator, rewrite it as negative 8 plus 12i, because you want the real part first. 9 plus 4 makes 13. And then you can separate it into two parts, because you want the real part here and the imaginary part here. So that would be negative 8 thirteenths plus 12 thirteenths times i. For number 30, you don't really have to multiply by the conjugate of 3i, although you could, but the easiest thing to do is just to multiply 3i times another i, because that will eliminate the i's. So we know 3i times i in the denominator becomes 3i squared, which then becomes negative 3. You'll distribute in the numerator, and that result is 2i plus 3i squared which becomes 2i minus 3, and then reverse the order and write it as negative 3 plus 2i, and then divide or multiply everything by negative 1 because you don't want a negative in the denominator. You always want your denominators to be positive. So you just multiplied everything by negative 1 to get this line and then separate it into two parts. So you'll do 3 divided by 3 is 1, and then you have negative 2 thirds times i. So that's your final answer there. For number 31, all you need to do is multiply by i on the top and bottom. So you have 3 times i, or 3i, and on the bottom is 2i times i, which is 2i squared, and that makes negative 2 in the denominator, then move the negative in front of the fraction because you want your denominators always to be positive. So you just have the negative of 3 halves times i. For number 32, you will need to multiply by the conjugate of 4 plus 5i, and that's going to be 4 minus 5i. You'll multiply by that on the bottom and the top. Distributing on the top, 3 times 4, 3 times negative 5i, 2i times 4, and 2i times negative 5i results in this top line. On the bottom, you'll distribute 4 times 4, 4 times negative 5i, 5i times 4, and 5i times negative 5i. And the result is this line. Combining like terms, negative 15i plus 12i is negative 7i, negative 10 times i squared becomes positive 10, and 12 plus 10 makes 22. In the denominator, the negative 20i and the positive 20i cancel out, negative 25i squared becomes positive 25, and then 25 plus 16 makes 41. Then you can rewrite it as two separate parts, so that would be 21 over 41 minus 7 over 41i. For number 33 is more of the same. We need to multiply by the conjugate of 2 minus 3i, which is 2 plus 3i. And you'll multiply that on the bottom and the top. And then distributing the numerator, we get 8 plus 12i plus 14i plus 21i squared. And then distributing everything in the denominator, 
we get this 4 plus 6i minus 6i minus 9i squared. And then combining like terms, we end up with the 8 here, um, the 12i and 14i makes 26i, and of course 21i squared becomes negative 21. 8 minus 21 is negative 13, and then you have plus the 26i. In the denominator, 6i minus 6i cancels, and negative 9i squared becomes positive 9, which then adds with the 4, 9 plus 4 is 13. And then you can write it as two separate parts. So negative 13 divided by 13 is negative 1, and 26i minus 13 is positive 2i. More of the same for number 34. The conjugate of negative 2 plus 4i is negative 2 minus 4i. You'll multiply that on the bottom and top. And then distributing on the top, you get this line here. Distributing on the bottom, you get this line. Combining like terms in the numerator, you have negative 6 plus 2i minus 28. Combining the negative of course, the negative 28 comes from 28 times i squared. Combining those like terms, you have negative 34 plus 2i. In the denominator, the 8i's cancel. Negative 16i squared becomes positive 16 plus the 4 makes 20. Now we can reduce this to lowest terms by dividing everything by 2 to get this line here. And then we can separate that into two parts to get this line. Okay, for number 35, the conjugate of negative 2 minus 3i is negative 2 plus 3i. You'll multiply that on the bottom and on the top here. When you distribute everything on the top, you'll get this line. When you distribute everything on the bottom, you get this line. Combining like terms on the top, you get this line. Remember, negative 3 times i squared is positive 3 there. And you combine negative 3i and 2i, that gives you the negative 1i. Then you can add 3 plus 2 to make 5. In the denominator here, the negative 6i's cancel and negative 9i squared becomes positive 9, and then add that to the 4 to make 13. Separating it into two parts, you get this final line here. For number 36 and 37, we want to plot the complex numbers. Now first of all, the horizontal axis becomes the real axis, and the vertical axis here becomes the imaginary axis. 4 minus 5i. 4 is the real part, and negative 5 is the imaginary part. Starting at the origin, you would go to the right 4 on the real axis, and then down 5 on the imaginary axis. So plotting the point would be located here. For number 37, we just have a real answer, so we only need to plot the real part of this number, which is negative 6. Starting at the origin, go to the left 6 units, and just stay there. So plotting the answer for 37 would be here. And then for our last four questions, we are expressing as a reduced power of i. First, let's review the cycle of four. i to the first is i, i to the second is negative one, i to the third is negative i, and i to the fourth is positive one. Since everything is in a cycle of four, all you do is divide um, the exponent by 4. The other way to think about it is any exponent whose power is a multiple of 4 is going to be equivalent to i to the fourth or 1. So for number 38, since 40 is a multiple of 4, that's going to be the same as i to the fourth, which is 1. Now for 39, we have i to the 25th. 
what you want to do is you want to split up the 25 into 24 plus 1. So this can be written as i to the 24th times i to the 1st. And the reason why we use 24 is because it is a multiple of 4. And we know that any exponent whose multiple is 4, who is a multiple of 4, would give us positive 1. So i to the 24th is 1. 1 times i to the 1st is just i. Fifty is not a multiple of four, but the closest number that is less than fifty, that is a multiple of four, is forty-eight. So i to the fiftieth can be written as i to the forty-eighth times i to the second, because forty-eight plus two is fifty. Now since the forty-eight is a multiple of four, i to the forty-eighth is just going to be one. So that's one times i to the second. And that's going to be i to the second. All right, 1 times i to the second is i to the second. And looking at our cycle, i to the second would give us negative 1. So that's the answer. And then for 41, we have i to the 67th. The closest number to 67, that is a multiple of 4, is 64. So i to the 67th can be written as i to the 64th times i to the 3rd. i to the 64th would just be 1, since 64 is a multiple of 4. And then 1 times i to the 3rd is i to the 3rd. And then based on our cycle, i to the 3rd is negative i. So our final answer there is negative i.